good morning and welcome to the NSSF Financial Literacy Program. Our usual hour, our usual day, the last day of the month, every two months when we converge ourselves into school. My name is Moa Apollo and um, I welcome you back to the School of Money. As you know, the back office team is kind enough, they will share with me the slide, but before we go into that, I will ask uh, them to share to share with us the poll so that we know who is with us and uh, what are their profiles. So we'll go into our first poll question, which is to determine who are you that is tuned in, what's your gender, are you male, are you female, what's your age bracket, are you below 44 or ab are you above 45, How, what are your coping mechanisms in preparing in preparing, uh, what coping mechanism is your workplace putting in pl uh, put uh, putting in place to manage stress? We just need to know this, and it's, is it building relationships, investing in money wisely, uh, doing regular there? All those. Uh, I'm trying to read the last one. If someone is kind enough to just scroll up, kindly go fill in, fill in, fill in, and then we get our it started uh, we are going to close this poll in the next five minutes sorry five seconds and then we start on our on our are we able to do that thank you uh, Jackie you can close that and then we'll get back to the results uh, or you could leave it open for a few of the other persons that are able to fill it out then we can get the results are you male are you female what's your age bracket we do this so that we understand our panelists understand who they are speaking to and they can be able to set perspective but allow me to just share with you why we do this and as usual we do this as NSSF because we want to do three things achieve three things out of this one there is a, a statistic out there that people have lost their money after they have taken it from NSSF or after they have taken it from public service at retirement. Within two years, they have lost their money. We want to reverse that. That should not be our story. The, our benefits, wherever you are getting them from, they need to outlive you. We want to build a financially empowered membership and national citizenry. We want to be with that mem membership where you are. Talking about money is not, does not cause discomfort because you have none of it. And we want to give our members options. What options do you have? In this class, we define poverty as lack of options. You can have a billion with, shield, with, with NSSF, but if it's a billion and it's the only money you have, you don't have options, then you are poor. So we want people to have options. What are those things? What, is it the farm? Is it uh, your, your skill? Is it? But you have to have options as any individual. Today is day 54 of the year, and uh, it's our first webinar of this year. And I would want to take off that time to just reflect on your resolutions. <coughs> Again, for me, mine is to do the, 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 small, the small things because the heavy lifting, the panel is here. Uh, thank you, Jackie. They have shared the results. The audience, and this I'm speaking to my panel here, the audience is 54% male, 46% female. Congratulations on the women. This number keeps getting up more and more, and we like the way things are looking. 55% of the audience is below 44 years. And 45% of the audience is above 50, uh, 45 years. Now, most times when we talk about retirement, people think we are going to only talk to those persons who are about to retire. No, the conversation as it will be set and it will be told to you is best had when you get your first employment. If you, go, if you didn't hear it and you are now 44, you are 32, this is the next best time, so please utilize it. Even if you are 60 and you haven't heard it, still this is your next best time. So kindly receive it from the experts as you say. My parting shots as we, as we reflect on day 54, I want you to, you have made your resolutions. I like coming in with resolutions when the heat has gone down of re on resolution setting. <coughs> Excuse me. Most of, most of us have set resolutions and by now we have abandoned. <coughs> so allow me to ignite your fire on resolutions. I'm giving you six and I'm asking you pick one. Pick one. Don't go, don't do on any. Pick one and run with it. If something counts, it has to be counted. 
If it counts, then please, please track it progressively. Resolve. If it's the only thing you do, resolve that whatever you think counts in your life can be tracked on a daily. Today is day 54. I am tracking the number of days. What is it that you've done in 54 days about that goal? Whatever counts needs to be counted. Confuse your neighbor. Resolve to confuse your neighbor. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the things, the gifts you can give yourself is confusing your neighbor. Do not allow to live to your neighbor's expectations. Live on your own terms. If they expect you and they see you as that person who should be, who should be driving a, a Mercedes-Benz, that's their terms. What are your terms? What is your pocket saying? Just because you have that money, just because you've received that NSSF check does not mean you need to buy that Mercedes-Benz. Just because you can afford it, do you need it? Live on your terms. Confuse your neighbors. Your neighbors will start thinking, this man is supposed to be by, uh, uh, you're supposed to be cooking meat and today is cooking binyewa. It is okay. It is about you. Number three, enlist. Resolve to enlist. I'm saying pick one. And you can resolve to enlist yourself among the grown-ups. Ladies and gentlemen, we have said this over and over again. Growing old is mandatory. When we woke up this morning, we grew older or we grew older by a day. You cannot avoid it. Just by waking up, you have grown old. But growing up is optional. Not, every <coughs> not everyone that grows old actually grows up. So in whatever you do, enlist yourself among the grown-ups this year be have one field that's just what that one field where you can say i am a musei they don't call you musei because of your age but they call you musei because you are an expert in that my phone four it's on the side of my back. on black tax resolve black tax is one of those things that really 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 take away our money and we are an african culture we are an african culture we are not going to leave that out but if you are paying this black tax, if you are paying this black tax to impress people, kindly, kind and kindly, let your money first impress you before you impress your relatives. Let your money, let your financial status impress you. Then you can now go into impressing your family members. That black tax is coming to you because you are trying to impress people. Resolve to impress yourself first. Finally, second final. On fees, and I say this with a lot of, uh, it's a very sensitive topic. Each one of us is dying to take our children to that school. But your intentions are good. However, affordability is supreme. You all intend to take our children to the best schools, but we need to take them to the best schools we can afford. It is better for your child to go into what you might call a low-ranking school, but you can afford it and you are able to pay and they are not disturbed by school fees. Other than taking them to that high-end school and they are, always on the, they are always on that list of school fees defaulters, your child will grow up presenting you, thinking that you, he comes from a poor family, yet you only took them to a place that you could not afford. So resolve on affordability. And finally, and this one is my repeat from last year, it's, a, it's one resolution I am repeating, and I want to repeat and repeat until I get it right. Have organized a happy accident on your account. A happy accident happens when salary of one month collides with the salary of another month. That's a happy accident. You have been getting salaries for the last 60 months, that's five years. For the last 110 months, 20 months, that's 20, 10 years. But you have never, you want salary has never outlived a month. Organize that to be a happy accident. And ladies and gentlemen, if you pick up any one of these, it will inform your habits, it will inform your attitudes, and it will inform your financial status. I am not the speaker for today. Allow me to introduce Oscar Semwea Musoke. Oscar Semwea Musoke, for me, is one of those things I can say I have arrived. I have always been listening to him and uh, wondering if I would ever be in the same room with him. But today, he's here and he's in the headmaster's class. Oscar, welcome. You are the boss of this show, but I just need to give you one. There is only one rule in this class. When you're addressing me, you put a sub before headmaster and a sub after headmaster. Please try it. Sir, headmaster. 
yes, good student. Oscar, same way I'm soaking. Please take us away. Thank you so much, uh, Apollo Mboa, my Mutabani, for that introduction and for the tips. I'm not sure I was concentrating enough, so I'll get them again. I hope they'll be on the screen somewhere for you. If you're listening or watching, they're very useful tips. I like the bit of surprise your account. I know. Uh, we need some magic to surprise our accounts. Surprise your accounts, but still pay in your NSSF. Um, so welcome to this uh, NSF financial literacy classroom, as Apollo says. Uh, beyond money, the psychological preparedness for retirement. Very good program that prepares you for retirement. I'm also in class to learn. And we have two panelists here, Dr. Evas Atwine Kansime, most welcome to this so uh, MOAS class at NSSF. Thank you. You're Dr. Evas Atwine is a clinical psychologist and mental health professional with a total of 50, over 15 years experience in mental health and psychological, psychosocial support services. Uh, Eva, uh, interrupt at any point if I'm not saying these things correctly. Sure. She's the CEO and founder of International Center for Mental Health and Family Care Limited, a workplace and family-focused organization. Dr. Atwine possesses specialized, specialized skills in marriage and couple therapy, parenting and relationship coaching. Her first degree is in social work and social administration, for you uh, recent students out there, you can become her in the future. She has a master's degree in demography and psychology, a doctorate of humanities from the Open Christian University, and is currently pursuing another PhD in mental health and counseling psychology at Nkumba University. Welcome to this uh, Beyond Money show. Thank you uh, so much Dr. for having me. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Then we have Mr. Matthias Katamba. He's, uh, <coughs> I've known him for many years, especially in the banking sector, but he's gone beyond banking. Matthias is a leadership, governance, and strategy consultant, as well as an executive coach, business advisor, and thought leader with over 25 years of high-level corporate experience. He's the founder and team leader at MacLead, a boutique consulting and business advisory firm and currently chairs and serves on several boards in multiple sectors ranging from media and hospitality to financial services. An accomplished banker, he's previously uh, served as a CEO of three commercial banks, that's Finance Trust, Housing Finance Bank, and DFCU Bank, in addition to co-founding Progression Capital Africa and East African Inclusion Focus Private Equity Fund. He has, in addition, served as chairman of the Bankers Association, the Institute of Bankers and Association of Microfinance Institutions. He's a champion of sustainability and inclusive finance for social economic transformation in Africa. He has uh, an advanced executive leadership training from Harvard Kennedy School in Harvard. Wharton Business School in University of Pennsylvania, Strathmore University in Kenya, an institution, financial institution in Lagos. This man is really into money and money education. You're most welcome to this financial literacy class, uh, Matthias. So the psychological preparedness for retirement what were your thoughts on this, uh, Dr. Evas Atwine? Initial thoughts. <clears throat> My initial thoughts um, were that uh, retirement is, is uh, one of the top <coughs> five life events that uh, people experience. Um, you know, life unfolds in, in, in different events. But it's one of the, the top big um, five. And uh, it, it comes with so many changes uh, because you have to make adjustments. And, um, and it's, a big, it's a big junction 
in life and uh, and it requires um, a lot of adjustment, a lot of mindset change, a lot of doing things differently. And so, um, and, and you know, the brain drives everything we do. And so if um, whatever we do is programmed first, and so if we have to manage retirement well, we need to work on the, on, on the psychological and mental well-being. Um, so that we are able to help people make good decisions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's, that, that's number one. But, uh, but also, secondly, <coughs> the fact that uh, there are so many aspects in terms of uh, uh, how we respond to that change. Um, does it leave us healthy or do, does it leave us anxious? And uh, if we make decisions from a place of anxiety, then that's not a healthy place to do things. Mm. Yeah, so those were my initial, initial thoughts. Thought. Yeah. Just, just to examine that a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, a little bit more, on two aspects. The first one, in, in Uganda, people who actually get to the retirement age are in a very minority mm -hmm. uh, because we have a youthful society. So that's one. So if it's top five, it may be top five for very few, very few people. Mm -hmm. Then secondly, retirement. Is it a Ugandan thing? I mean, <laughs> my mother wants to work till she dies. I know. So, mm. um, I think when we are talking about <coughs> this, we, we're looking at, of course, there's this traditional retirement mm. um, component, which is mandatory. But then there is also um, voluntary there is also, I think there's also accidental <laughs> because you haven't expected it. Mm. And so um, once it happens, so what are we looking at as retirement? Because it is, it's a time when we are not in programmed active work schedule. Mm. And, uh, and, and so it could be what you're talking about, people not making it to the, to the retirement, which is the traditional um, understanding so that's it but then how about um when people have to retire from from work involuntarily you know mm -hmm. um and and so that that as well comes so <clears throat> yes there they are a few uh, that we have that yeah. are making it there but they are there mm. There. That's a good point. Yeah. And and the fact that uh, we are seeing few then we also have to ask why. Mm. Th those are questions that come up. Sure. The, as we move to Mr. Katamba, if you're following, you can go to DSTV, channel 375. Go TV is channel 829. Star Times is channel 282. Free to air 939. Plus, of course, those of you that are online. Same question to you, uh, Matthias, Mr. Matthias Katamba. What were your initial thoughts when you saw the topic, the psychological preparedness for retirement? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Oscar, first let me thank NSSF for having me on this show. The first thing that came to my mind is the reality of life itself. That uh, for everybody who is called to serve, either in some kind of uh, professional setting uh, or in, in a job, uh, you know, manual or, or whatever, but is defined for you as a job. There will be a transition one day when you leave uh, that job. It is not the end of your life. Uh, it's not to go and sit home. You know, human beings are designed to be productive and that you will continue to be productive uh, in a different way. But will you be ready? How do you define yourself as a person today? Because first you are an individual before you are what the job calls you, right? And will you live with the individual who does not? Like death will happen, your transition from your current employment will happen at some point. But your life will continue. And your life should continue and thrive. And the experiences that you have learned from that job or that piece of work that you've been doing should continue to make you a much more productive human being to society. 
that you don't lose the opportunity to make the transition meaningfully is what came to me uh, most importantly. Right. And yes, money is important, but there are other aspects of who you are and who you will live as an individual. Um, and will you be able to carry those aspects from the job uh, into your new existence and continue to thrive and be happy and contribute to life and to others uh, meaningfully? That's what came to my mind. Mm. You, 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 you've been in a lucky position. You ha held high-profile jobs. So, and then you are in a high-profile job, and then you leave. So at that particular time, do you think about when I'm departing, this, this is what I need to be thinking about, or do you just worry about your departure, not plan for the post-departure? In some ways, it's such a benefit having you here. Well, thank you, Oscar. The, something that I say to those who have met and had an interaction with me, that every job I have gotten into, I have first of all thought about how will I live, right? And I've been fortunate to have been a chief executive at the age of 30, a chief executive of a regulated financial institution. Uh, I have always worked contract employment. If I have a three-year contract, a five-year contract, uh, it's very clear to me uh, what am I going to do in the time I'm here, but when I leave, how am I going to leave the company? And always been important for me, how do I prepare the company for the time after me, right? What do I do with those who immediately report to me? How do I make leaders uh, out of them so I'm able to free myself to be able to move on to the next adventure uh, in life? I have found that my transitions have always given me an opportunity to aspire to something higher, right? And you can see from... Uh, a financial institution to a larger financial institution to a larger one until you know I've been running uh, uh, one of the largest financial institutions, a domestically systemically important bank. From the perspective of my career as a banker in Uganda, you could say that I've gotten to the tip of it. Then what else can I do to share my talents with the rest of the world? What I can do for one company, how can I do it for a lot many more companies? In other words, how can I contribute uh, better to the world because we are only here for a period of, of time. That's how I have looked at it. So transitions have always been easy to me because they've always been about what's my contribution, uh, what did I come to do here, have I done it, what more can I do, can I do it here, or do I need to go into the world to be able to do, spread my wings and do a lot more. You mm -hmm. have to free yourself first, but the freedom has to happen in your mind, knowing who you are and who you are uh, besides the role that you are into. So you're never defined uh, by the role. Yeah. Chopped you a little bit. You know, some of us refuse to die. You, you, <laughs> you kind of ask someone, have you written your will? So who says I'm going to die? You understand. So when you say predictability. <laughs> no, so I'm talking challenge. about predictability in terms of earning and, mm. and you have a job, mm. no one is threatening it yet. Yes, I know a number of people do contractual jobs, but others have this open ended um, mm. kind of job schedules. And so uh, unless, please mark my word, unless yeah. we are compelled to think about it, it's very rare, number one, that you're going to think, I'm going to come to a point where I don't have the job. You know, by the way, even when people have contractual jobs, um, I, I've, I've done contractual jobs and I've worked on projects before and I've seen you know that the project duration is five years but just one year towards the end, people begin to panic as if they didn't know that, uh, that uh, it was going to be five years. And so human nature uh, gravitates towards comfort. I always tell people that we are created to desire comfort and pleasure. So if we are going to think a different way, there has to be, we have to be compelled to do that. Part of it is, is these conversations we are having, you see? So we, we, we tend to settle in that comfort zone. And, and so, yes, um, only know yourself as CEO. <laughs> you don't see yourself as Matthias or Oscar or Evers, but we see ourselves as CEO. And there is a certain joy it brings to us, but it has to be managed. And people have to think beyond that and know that, number one, life come, uh, unfolds in seasons. So this is a season when I have this, but a season, another season may come when I'm not a CEO. So what will happen? You know, and, and so these conversations we are having, I believe, help people yeah. to understand that. I, I, I think 
kids. So, I mean, I, I work in school. I work in schools. And we admit children in P1, mm -hmm. in, in kindergarten. And we want to take them all the way to a six, mm -hmm. year 13. Mm -hmm. So we work with hope. How, how do you infuse that into people? That even if you're leaving, some people are coming in. Yeah. So, so once again, these are realities that have to be um, shared with people. And, and we, we work and support them to embrace them. To embrace them because you see uh, life doesn't work on default setting now if we think oh everyone will understand that um, no we, we grow and that's that's why uh, some of the conversations we are having about being intentional in helping people understand that this you have this but it's it's going to end um, you've started here, but tomorrow you might not have it. So have you thought about that? So you're creating that kind of awareness and helping people to embrace the realities of life. So what happens when you don't have this job? You know, what happens? Have you thought about beyond the job? Or are you just focused on the job that you have? <laughs> and, 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 and so that's, that's all. So what happens? And that's why people develop... Um, anxiety and plunge into depression because they were used to certain routine. And, and um, the, the, by the way, the other thing, Oscar, is that uh, when we are used to routine, we don't do a lot of thinking and reflection. We don't do a lot of self-discovery. You see, um, people know themselves as working in the bank. Now, we run a program at, at my organization and we, we, we call it self-discovery, you see, as part of our life coaching program. So what else are you capable of doing beyond being a bank manager? <laughs> you see? Uh, so if you're going to define yourself as a bank manager, probably you are, you're good at baking. Probably you're good at, at knitting. Probably what else can you do um, in terms of earning you money, but also utilizing, being useful in society? That's very important for psychological mm. well-being, relevance. Mm. You see? So... That's something that needs to happen so that people don't just use this current job as a point of identity. <coughs> mm. and, and when they lose the job, then they drop dead because they've lost their identity. Identity is a big thing yeah. in, in, in life, mm. you see. I, I guess it crosses everywhere because uh, someone who was an MP 10 years ago mm -hmm. is still referred to as honorable. Sure. And I've noticed lately, even in politics, you, you there, there's something I keep saying: a cabinet reshuffle is coming, and then, and then it would worry people. So it it, it goes across completely. Yeah. Mm. You see, if it didn't worry people, would still get worried about them. That's a, that's a natural process. Mm. We worry, but do we? Um, and and um, you see, I explain to people that uh, we are fitted with all these emotions. These emotions uh, help us to know that we are human, you see? So for me to worry that a cabinet reshuffle is coming, that doesn't make me weak. That's not a problem. Mm. But what becomes a problem is what happens if I don't get this cabinet job? Do I die yeah. because I define myself by that, that job, you see? Or, or, or when I worry, do I stop somewhere? Do I reflect? Do I challenge my brain to say, okay, if I don't get this uh, cabinet job, I can still do something yeah. else, you know? Yeah. Or maybe the season will change at a certain point. So that's the most important thing, that people don't plunge into hopelessness. Yeah. You see, hopelessness is the place of depression and dysfunctionality, yeah. you see? So is your hope just tugged to a, a, a position, a job? What else are you capable wow. of doing? Yeah. Are you sure when you scan the horizon and when you check your, 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 your environment and, and your relevance in this world is only defined by one job? That's dangerous, mm. you see? And, and so that's, those are some of the conversations we are having with people so that they don't just they don't die because um, a job has ended for whatever reason, whether it's mandatory retirement or involuntary um, retirement, uh, I think those are the, mm. the right terminologies, what happens? Are you sure you can't do anything else? And so that's why, while people are still in active work, <coughs> they also need to step back and say, what else can I do? Prepare. Prepare. What else can I, what else am I capable of? 
you know? Mm. Uh, uh, I, I use it to do program work, if I may be vulnerable here. I use it to do a lot of programming, HIV and health and all that. But then throughout, I knew that I had a skill in counseling. I was gifted. Mm. You know, I had other talents. And that's why I, uh, after that, I settled into my place of of, of it gave you the future. And future. You know, the, I, I've written this word down, and, and if you're on the show, you could write it down. Avoid hopelessness. Yeah. Uh, 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 the government paper a little while ago, I think a couple of years ago, said that uh, 15, was it 14 million of us have mental health issues? Sure. I don't know if you remember that headline. I do, I do. So w where, where do we go? Where should we go to, to prepare to fix our mental health. And it's good that in Uganda right now, it, we, we are more aware that uh, of mental health. We yeah. haven't been aware. We've just been saying someone has a mental problem, throw them away. So in some ways, it's good that now we are aware. But where does one go for mental health? Okay, so um, that statistic was shared about a year ago. Mm. And uh, um, immediately after that statistic came out. By the way, let me remind viewers that 14 million represents 33% of the population. And, uh, uh, I, and, we had and 18 million yes. is the working population, <laughs> as we have learned this the morning. Population. Yes. And uh, we followed it up as, mm. as mental health experts with the Minister of Health. And we were actually told that that was an underestimation. Oh, now, underestimation. Underestimation. We probably have more people with mental illness. Let me clarify this. Mm. When we say mental illness, it's not just a little anxiety. It is not just a little stress. We're talking depression. We're talking extreme. B because mental health runs on a, on, a, on a spectrum. And so we have little stress, anxiety, and all. But when we talk about mental illness, we're talking the extreme end, which is dysfunctionality people are depressed beyond functionality you see and and so that is worrying that's worrying please remember this might be an underestimation of what we're going through mm. right and um, definitely there are so many things that uh, that cause stress beyond or cause that dysfunctionality beyond um uh, finances yeah. And uh, uh, I'll tell you, much of it is actually relational. I hope I have I get to a point where I explain that 90% um, of our health is relational, right? It is mental. It is emotional. And, and so the physical is only 10%. Mm -hmm. So when we say that uh, people, um, we have over, let's assume a hand, uh, half of our population is mentally ill, it, it may go beyond yeah. just the finances. It may be something to do with how people are relating. Or oh, I could say, if I'm about to retire, right. I may not be able to afford to pay a second mortgage, and that will affect my reputation and the way people see me in life. That's and right. And that would give me a, 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 a bit of high anxiety. Stress. That's, mm. that's, a, that's a right. But I will also tell you that most people, I hope you are aware that we retire to relationships more than finances. Wow. Yeah. And uh, I'm really glad that uh, NSSF is having this conversation because every time retirement planning was mentioned. But if I've had my relationship because of money, so it means um, <laughs> and I'm about to retire and have no money, I'm going then to maybe <laughs> you, you should explain that a little I'm bit I'm going more. to explain that a little yes. more, but can I first respond to your earlier question? Yes, please. Where you said when people have mental illness mm. or challenges, mm. we, we hate to, because people think every little stress is illness. I, I clarified that. But then where do <coughs> they go? Mm. Um, we have an opportunity that now we have a number of service providers, including us uh, at our center, um, ICFC Therapy Center, and I honestly would like to appeal to our population, please seek professional help, because I always tell people that there's no problem that cannot be solved. Can we afford it? Yes. Um, okay. mm -hmm. Yes. A, a counseling session is, uh, it's still cheap here. It's still affordable. Mm. People don't, don't mention figures. I won't mention <laughs> figures, but it's, it's yeah. a, you see, mm. affordability, mm. Um, Affordability depends on how we appreciate the service, you see. Mm. Now, 
we, we are glad to spend on physical health, but we don't know that 95%, over 95% of, of physical illness is either directly caused by stress or, or indirectly made worse by stress. You understand? So we are glad to go to hospitals and spend so much money, especially on these um, lifestyle illnesses, but those are actually caused by stress. So if we understand that, we, we, matters of affordability wouldn't be such a big issue. Mm. We only need to appreciate that this is important. Mm. Thank you. You 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 were going to say something else. Before I was going to say something mm. about relational health. Yes, yes. Now, um, in our experience, um, to, we we run a program on on retirement, actually focusing on the psychological and 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 social relationships um, aspects, and helping people understand that eventually, when we go to retire. <laughs> Much of, of our retirement is not about money. We retire to family, we retire to relationships. Now, one of the things that is happening is we work so much in the hope that we are making uh, preparations for easy retirement, <coughs> we, we invest. But while we are doing this, we are not investing in the relationships we are going to retire to, family. Now, there is a study that was done um, in 2020 um, uh, uh, among the one of the big international agencies, which are not mentioned here, and uh, they found out that um, average lifespan of their retirees, this is big, average lifespan of their retirees was two to three years. Whoa. That's dangerous. <laughs> That's dangerous because if, if you, you work for 65 years and you only have two years to live, do you understand? Mm. So you've been very NSSF busy. NSSF has paid you out. And NSSF has paid you then out. Then you live two years. And, and then you only live two years. So that's, that's quite dangerous. Mm. And, and it could be related to the anxiety and stress and depression we've talked about. But what they found out was actually much of it was because of loneliness. 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 Mm. I think we've also seen some of these things come out on I Love WhatsApp because it brings all <laughs> the mm. world closer to mm. us. And uh, you've seen conversations around how, if you allow me, especially men, mm. um, uh, they are lonely in retirement. And um, for us who are in psychology and family therapy, um, what we are seeing is that especially men, and I have nothing against men, well. I'm just especially men, they work so hard and uh, they have a challenge with work-life balance, what we call work-family balance. They don't, they disconnect and also women, but I'm just saying especially. Mm. Um, we disconnect with family. We disconnect with what we call vital relationships. <laughs> you see? Vital relationships that are actually going to support you in retirement. So by the time you come back from work, uh, you've retired, you've probably set up um, businesses and uh, home and all, but the people in these establishments have disconnected with you. Mm. They've moved on. Mm. So that's how you find people saying, oh, you know, I worked so hard, but now the children, they disconnect. Human relationships mm -hmm. are about quantity time and quality time. I see people in the studio here shaking their yes. heads yes. in agreement. It's about but, quantity. But there was a video going around on yes. WhatsApp. You mentioned yeah. WhatsApp of, uh, of an old man, and they were pitying him because he was, he was making doing breakfast for and, himself and, for and wherever. And me, I thought the guy has gas. He's cooking on gas, and he has the stuff to cook. And, <laughs> you know, I, I wasn't part of those feeling bad for him. You, you see... Know? At least he was not blowing in a charcoal or sigiri. <laughs> but you see, mm. people are feeling sorry. But I really want to emphasize this. And mm. if I may mention only this today, I'll be glad. Mm. Because we disconnect with relationships we are eventually going to retire to. You see? Mm. You know, life begins basic. When you're a child, you need very few things. You just need a smile from parents. You need, uh, you need uh, um, just people to uh, make you happy. You're not thinking about so many things. We also retire and age basic, mm. you see? So if you check with retirees or aging people, they, they don't need much. 
they only need someone to say hello. They need to say to have their children say, "I love you, mommy or daddy." They only need a few things, and that's where mm. we don't invest. So we 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 get into um, um, this uh, pension fund. The emphasis has been pension fund, but we are not talking about love bank. You know, are you investing? Are you cultivating relationships as you're working? <laughs> because ultimately, you don't need much. Mm. Now, let's assume. Now, what happens? I'm going to give you two more scenarios. So we don't invest in that. The second thing is that uh, most of the time we are tempted to accumulate so much. We accumulate so much. You have this, you have this, you have that. And again, I'm speaking from experience, Oscar. Most people are dying because <laughs> of the things they've accumulated. And they realize their children are actually not connected to what they've accumulated. Mm. That's, a, by the way, a big stress trigger. Very big stress trigger. And uh, I've always been, uh, as part of our program, I've been sensitizing parents to say, please check. Are you sure you need all that? And when we are working, we think, oh, I'm working for my children. I'm saving for my children. I, don't, I want my children to be comfortable. Be careful because, number one, you can go and become when, a you, you, when you make your children so comfortable, they are not going to take over the things you, 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 they don't understand. They don't connect with the pain that got into accumulation of those things. Secondly, even if they did, they have their own dreams to pursue. And uh, I'm telling you, this is, these are some of the stress triggers we are seeing mm -hmm. among us people who are going to retire. And so they are worried. They've put up this. They had say, the children are saying, mm. oh, I want to go into cybersecurity. They're saying, but there's a farm. This farm, I, I bought it for you. They're not connecting with it. They don't understand it. You see, that was your dream. Mm. And I've always told parents, please, your children might not live under your <laughs> the shadow of your dream. <laughs> um, um, yeah, it's, uh, I, I hope you are not worrying the people following the, the show. <laughs> But uh, I've been writing down things. Uh, uh, contracts, I hope you wrote that down. Contract gives you entry, exit. Uh, you've given me some more words, right? Accumulation bug. Yes. I've written that down. I, I like this one, love bank. Mm. Uh, so we, before we leave the studio, we're going to ask Kapolomboa, Lomboa, the headmaster of the studio, <laughs> to have education on the love bank as well. Mm. You know, at school, I advise parents, don't, don't, don't send children away. They say, he has just finished SS6, just finished year 13. Now, next month, university. I said, no, keep them with you for a little yep. while. Yep. Now, I'm going to add on the word love bank. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, we, we have another one was uh, relational health. Mm -hmm. I've learned that as well. So, we've not ignored you, Matthias. So, we're back <laughs> to you, Matthias Katamba. I was learning. You, yeah, we were in proper class. Yes, thank you. Uh, Matthias, how, how, you know when you're CEO of a bank, uh, the other jobs, at least you had a bit of relaxation. Trust bank, you were just growing the bank. But DFC, you were under fire. You know, how, how does someone live under fire and then they go to retire? Like, when you go to DFC bank, you're going to attack. You know, you're looking at figures, money. But today in NSSF, you've seen how they were showing us by the minute. This is a, So that was your life. Then how do you come down? How do you calm down in the evening to begin with? And how do you come down and be a pleasant Matthias Katamba after three, four years of DFCU? Well, thank you very much, uh, mm. Oscar. First, what I would like to do is maybe give you some context mm. uh, of where uh, I, I see life and where my views come from. Mm. <coughs> First, <coughs> if you ever look at Africa and compare Africa to the rest of the world uh, and think about why shouldn't we be like the rest of the world in terms of human development, uh, quality of life, you know, social welfare, all the things that you see. What you call a good life uh, and, and why should people want to leave Africa uh, to go and look at other parts of the world? The truth from where I come from, the secret lies with what do we do with the very best uh, of our people and how much of themselves do they bring to the workplace? And I'll just go a little bit further. Let's just look at NSSF. NSSF has 2.2 million uh, subscribers. Of all of, of those ones, only 800,000 are active, right? Maybe the numbers are a little bit different. But this NSSF with only 800,000 active out of a population of 45 million receives 115 billion 
uh, every month. 115 billion every month gets pumped into uh, the public through uh, you know, payouts to NSSF members. That's more than a trillion shillings uh, a year. This NSSF contributes 27% uh, to the uh, uh, you know, domestic debt, right? Lending to government with only 800,000 uh, people. If it had 800,000 times three, that is already 100%. All our borrowing would be happening uh, domestically. Think about that, for instance, right? But if, again, it was times three, 2.4 uh, uh, million uh, active uh, uh, you, you know, members, maybe that would mean several times in trillion shillings what goes into uh, the public uh, every year. Now, this NSSF, with all the money that it has, 12% of the GDP of this country, right, is out of taking 5% of what people save uh, from their job and the employer putting 10%. What happens to the rest, the 85% or the 95%? Take away what goes uh, to, to government, for example, 30%, say, income, uh, income tax payers you earn. What happens to the rest uh, that people take? The bottom line for me is what do we do with these 800,000 or so? How do we expand that? But most importantly, how do those 800,000 bring 100% of themselves to the workplace? And this is what I have found. So lately, I spend a lot of time teaching about purpose. Organizations today uh, you know, will have values, they will have a mission, uh, you know, they will have a vision, but not necessarily an organizational purpose. And individuals as well do not really know why they are doing what they are doing. Purpose gives us the ability to connect two very important things that will deal with a lot of the things that Dr. Twini has mentioned. One, it will help you to deal with meaning. Uh, why do I do this job? Why do I do what I do? Why do I show up every day? Why have I come to be CEO in this, orga this organization? Right? The other thing that it will give you, it will give you an ability to connect all of that to impact. What's my reason of being here? What do I want to be remembered for? What am I leaving in the world? And what's my contribution? Some people call that legacy. Usually that is something that people think about at the end of their life on their deathbed. What was it about? Was it about the money I made? Was it about the money I was able to accumulate? The things that Dr. Twini has mentioned. There's another video but, on WhatsApp a little while ago. Uh -huh. Sorry for butting in here. And, and, and when the old man was awake, they'd all be sorry and whatever. And every time he'd be in a coma, they'd jump up and celebrate. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he hadn't defined the, li the meaning of life for them. You're, you're right, Oscar. And so if the 800,000 or so that are active, mm. and you know we are told the, the active population should be 18 million out of the 45 million, mm. right? That includes your village drunkard, yeah. right? But you're looking at 800,000 that are active. If those 800,000 bring their full self to the workplace, and they know why they're there, and they're clear about their purpose, and understand the purpose of that organization, and why they're doing what they're doing, and they're able to derive meaning starting from their individual context and authenticity. You won't have a lot of corruption, you won't have uh, diversion, you won't have, because people know what they're doing. The head of state calls this patriotism, right? Because it means the same thing. Uh, it means understanding who you are, and why is it that you're here? And how do you connect the overall context of where this society should go? And what's your role in it? So if our friends in the developed world are where they are, and they're working hard to move faster every day, then we need to work two or three times as hard. First of all, to catch up, which is a much harder target. But the first thing is to bring our people to level. And everybody who has an opportunity to work, all the 800,000 have a responsibility. I speak these things because I've been privileged. If you become a CEO at 30 and have the opportunity to be CEO of three financial institutions, be chairman of all the financial sector associations, you have a responsibility and a burden. First, you have had the privilege, but second, the burden to be able to share and to contribute in a much more meaningful way, to be catalytic to as many people as possible to drive our society forward. So now, why would I come in an institution, work and leave? Because then I know my work is done. So if I come to an institution, I've been involved in transformations all through. So when I, uh, if I can just take you a little back. Uh, when I came back uh, from studying in the UK, I worked with a very interesting man called Ketan Mojari. I will never forget him. 
because this was a super entrepreneur who worked to transform a forex bureau into a financial institution. He created a bank that has kept growing up to today. I was working very directly with him. I was seeing how impactful his organization was, uh, what he was doing with businessmen downtown, giving them the opportunity to do many things that would take you through a rope and a hustle in, uh, you know, in an international bank at the time to be able to either get financing, uh, cross-border transactions, etc. From that, I got a very unique opportunity after having worked with Ketan to join what was uh, the savings department. If you remember, uh, when UPTC was being broken up, uh, you know, privatization and all of that, the savings department of the post office, uh, the guy who had been in charge of, the World Bank guy who had been in charge of the work, Nelson Ofono, became the CEO of the savings department becoming a bank, what was post bank. So I joined at that time in creating this institution. And for the first time, I went around the country. I had never been. I went to St. Mary's School in Kisubi. I went to Mugwane Private School in Kamboja. I went to boarding school when I was six. I didn't know this country, right? I went to high school. I left to go and study in the UK. So this was my first opportunity to go all around the country and appreciate this beautiful country, to see that there are people living in huts in West Nile, uh, etc., and all these sorts of things. At that time, you know, going from Karuma to Pakwach in a convoy and leaving the comfort of Kampala, my connection to transformation through financial services was beginning to be born at that time. So Postbank enabled me to go all around the country because we needed to move the services of uh, the bank from the post office counters. The bank had had a name, but it didn't have branches. Yet our services were offered in post office counters all across the country with a service level agreement. The postmaster was the bank manager, effectively, with no banking training. So what we then did, going around the country, I lived in, 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 in Western Uganda, I lived in Barara for about a, a year or so. I lived in Mbale, and I was living in the communities and seeing what our work was doing. And in those times, I was actually a regional manager, which meant that I was going all across those entire uh, regions. My understanding of what we need to do was extremely, extremely clear. And that's why that later drove me into microfinance. Because then I could see the impact of little bits of money uh, on on small people becoming bigger, becoming better, employing people, sending to s children to school, etc. So let me come to DFCU now. So transformation uh, at uh, Postbank, transformation uh, at Pride, it was an NGO, we transformed it into a deposit taking financial institution, got a license, then get into Finance Trust, which was Uganda Women's Finance Trust, an organization set up by women, uh, growing it from a nascent thing, into what you see today uh, as a bank. Later into housing finance, uh, we had, had been a housing finance company. The transformation had started, building up that transformation to create the solid financial institution. That is one of the best mm. uh, that you see today. And now DFCU. Yeah. Coming into DFCU, it was very <laughs> clear to me what this meant. It was a very shaky time for the company. It had uh, just uh, undertaken a, uh, a major acquisition with uh, uh, lots of challenges at the time. Mine was to create uh, stability, Unfortunately, we went into COVID, but that made the job even much more meaningful. Uh, we carry this powerful institution through the COVID uh, period. This is a company that has been involved in the transformation of life since independence. It's a legacy institution that was created to provide long-term financing to Ugandans uh, by the, our colonial masters as they left. And the new government, uh, after independence, was a large shareholder. Later, the company uh, uh, is allowed to bring in uh, additional capital from investors. There's nothing more important than that. And I'm very happy to see the trajectory uh, of the bank continuing to grow. But my work was done uh, coming through the transition or the stability, etc. And so the lessons that I have learned, uh, you know, being able to bring those lessons in the, in the, in the fora of, uh, you know, like this, uh, but most importantly, in the smaller engagements I have uh, with executives as a coach, uh, but also, uh, you know, training people, uh, I am very aligned with that Dr. Atwine does. My purpose program uh, is really about getting people to bring themselves 100% into the workplace. And that will really connect you to who you are. And who you are is not the job that you do. Who you are is the special gifts that you have, mm. right? And how uh, things, what things mean to you, and most importantly, what impact yeah. you're able to create. Yeah, and you yeah, can yeah. create that across jobs. Yes, I don't want you to conclude yet. The, 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 some words again that uh, if you're on the program, you should be more words to learn. Transformation. Uh, and if you're saving with uh, NSF, 800,000 people, 
then you are privileged. Uh, another word I've learned Absolutely. from you. And in a meaningful life. So I've picked up some messages that I'd like to, to, to put to you. Uh, but before that, a question for you, try Productivity. Again, that's where your privilege comes in. You, yes. you, you've been able to be productive. So I don't know, does NSF need to enter productivity? I, I walk a lot uh, for, for, for exercise. And before COVID, I walked down with some boys at uh, around Fairway Hotel. And, and there was a young man. I asked him, how much profit do you make a day? He said, I make 10,000. Luckily, I had 10,000 shillings on me. So I said, if you walk with me here and tell me about your business, I'll give you the 10,000 for today, so you double. And then he told me he has 10,000 as his uh, capital. He gets it every day, and he makes 10,000 a day. So I was thinking, how do you improve productivity? Does NSF need to go there? Is a question for you, Matthias. And then uh, Elizabeth Abbey says, uh, on messaging, says the most you can give to your children is to look after yourself so that they can focus on their work, not look after you. Then there's a gentleman who's 54 years and thinking time is running out. How do you overcome the feeling of not being busy? The another one says, uh, at 40 years, I picked up uh, voluntary work out of the fisheries ministry. That's a good thing. I'm mm. a Rotarian. Uh, I could join a singing club and so on. But how, how, if you could address some of those things, and then we'll call back the headmaster, sir, to stop us for a, a short break. Mm. So, uh, Oscar, productivity is a, a, it's a very crucial thing if you're going to look at your society moving from one place uh, to the next. Because, uh, you know, if you look at uh, what do you put, uh, you know, in the, the production process, you will put capital, right? And then you put labor, right? Uh, the ability of your, your labor uh, to make the most of the capital is very crucial, right? And, and that means however little capital you have, if the, the labor can be innovative, can, it can make the capital go much further. So you're about to do a, do a lot more things as a society, right? And let's not just look at it uh, as a company. We have to look at it as a society because NSSF is a national level institution and the messaging is to the members, which is, uh, which is uh, national. So there are mm. several inputs into that. And one of them is education, mm. right? And uh, earlier speaking to the headmaster, Mr. Headmaster, sir, uh, before we started, mm. I mentioned that this program is great, but this program and issues of uh, domestic savings, growth, must go in the national curriculum at a very early age because the productivity of the society should be able to build the capital that we need uh, to add onto the, the labor to be able to propel our society forward. If today 800 or 2.2 million people out of a population of 45 uh, million, right, can contribute 12.7 or 12.9 percent of the GDP of the mm. country. Mm. Just imagine if we edged that number up uh, two or three times. Now that's where productivity comes in. So who will make people productive? It is those that have the capability uh, to lead others through entrepreneurship, right? Uh, the role of the government is to create an enabling environment, uh, you know, security, um, you know, infrastructure, roads, you know, all those sorts of things. But the role of people, uh, like the people that work in the private sector, in banks, in telecoms, and all these things, is to create the inputs that will make enterprises work and work efficiently. And then the other final role for government is regulation. So if all those components come together, we can be able to step up the productivity uh, of our society. So, so we had universal primary education, then people get, get into secondary school. Let's deal with the dropout rates. Uh, because that's where the fall in the productivity begins to happen. That's where we begin to separate the 2.2 million, the 800,000, from the rest of the 18 million that are supposed to be economically active. Let's step up the number of those that can come up, and the way to do that is creating the avenues uh, through which employment will happen. Mm -hmm. So we need to begin tracking employment uh, numbers. I'm not saying let's create incentives for those who do give uh, employment, but how do we have a national conversation about increasing productivity of the human yeah. capital? Yeah. We, so, we, we in, in, in our school, we have work experience education. Right. And I, I'm, I'm thankful NSSF does offer us placements. But we start this 
from P5, year five, mm -hmm. getting children into work. So, uh, but at, at, at school, and hopefully that's the kind of education you're talking about. But maybe we need to do more on savings as well. So productivity and savings. And that's the point I was coming to. Mm. Uh, Through making this curriculum, yeah. uh, coming at much earlier age, mm. right? So today, if you gave a child, uh, if you create the kind of culture, we, because we need a cultural transformation uh, from the perspective of savings, that if I give you a uh, hundred shillings, uh, that's very little now. You know what's called a kendo? Mm. Uh, before you'd send a, ch a child yeah. to the shop to bring a kendo of wuto, mm. uh, a kendo well, today is a yeah. sachet, it's been yeah. formalized. Mm. Uh, that if you gave a thousand... You won't say uh, what else it has it, been holding. It, it, exactly. Mm. But if right from the beginning, he said, try and get the best price. So if you go at a thousand, and uh, there are three types of uh, oil, and you can get one for 700, come back home and declare the 300, right? Yeah. And get an incentive, right? The point I'm trying to say, it must start really early. Mm. Uh, because if people understand the value, the benefit uh, of being able to save, it will create a buffer that will take away uh, a lot of the anxiety that people eventually have that Dr. Uh, Atwine uh, mentioned about. But they will also learn how to multiply uh, their resources and they will get comfortable about how that grows without having to look uh, uh, elsewhere. Thank you. Uh, we're going to stop. I have Lydia Asio on messages saying, um, looking at this, listening to this and looking at retirement I just want to stop working happy, uh, fulfilling a happy lifestyle, loving my husband and our grown children and their children. And how can I make sure of that now at my fourth floor? And uh, Lydia, I want to take you back to the words of uh, Dr. Twine here. She used words like relational health. Uh, she used words like the love bank. Get into those. So we need a break. We've been talking and talking and talking. Mr. Headmaster, sir, can we hand over to you for about five minutes? Thank you so much. Thank you, Oscar. Uh, this is one of those programs where I, I went speechless. I, I, I usually stand up by myself. I don't need to be called back because I feel like this is my class. I, I will not retire from my class. But this is when, when, the, when the conversation started and uh, at first I was taken aback by... by by the mentor, the underestimated number, then I was looking into the room. You know when you look in around the room and you're saying, if we are half, so I was saying, which half am I in? Of course, I took myself in the other half, which is not meant, but then I was looking now, is it Oscar that is me mental illness? Is it, uh, I was there judging. But uh, mental health is a big thing. This this week I've really, really... Um, how many people? We then? are like ten, so, so two, two, two. Of, yeah, yes. Uh, yeah. Mm. So Oscar and, uh, no, it, must and the, it must be the people of NSSF, <laughs> <laughs> because here yeah, we have no mental issues. Yeah. NSSF, yeah. Oscar and, and, and Matthias have pulled that straw, so we'll, we are going to keep checking on you, <laughs> Doctor Ivas. Your work is cut sure, out. Is. But mental health is a big thing. This morning we had an internal program. Again, we are talking about mental health, and and, and for us as NSSF. Let me just uh, for one minute leap into NSSF and say for us as NSSF, knowing very well knowing that a time will come when I am also speaking from the other side. We are not I'm not NSSF, but at NSSF we believe in purpose, and one of the things to s make our people productive is we invest in uh, uh, mental health. So this morning we are talking about mental health, and an interesting conversation came in as work work life balance. That's the question, the predominant question, and the person actually brought this out in a good way and said forget about work-life balance because it's an impossible thing to crack. You need to start thinking about work-life integration. How can you bring these two things? How can you bring your, your, your family into the work? How can you bring your work into the family and then appreciate because you lose sight of your family trying to get money for them. They will resent you for trying to educate them to get the best uh, best job to educate them and then they resent you. So I, 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 it, it's, just, it's just a clicker. Uh, Mafia's people are asking, coming from a busy bit and probably you'll answer this when you get back with Oscar, he will guide, but coming from a busy environment and then now you are, how did you handle the first week, few weeks of not being busy? Everyone is worried about not being busy. 
I, I, I take off a, a week in a, in a, a day in a week and uh, I, I just practice trying not to be busy. It's not easy, but trying not to be busy. Switch off your phone. How do you? How did you get into that? But uh, just also to share my personal bit as I hand back to Oscar. When I changed employment five years ago from one employer to another, I was handling my previous employment. I was handling only the the cream of this country, the people who are able to put aside 200 million, 300 million without flinching, and uh, they just leave it with you for a year, two years. Like those are that such kind of people. And when they call you, jump. When they call you, jump. When I changed employment, I was their go-to person. But when I changed employment, I didn't get any calls from any of them. I, I mean, I, <laughs> I was there Mugezi, but now I had changed employment. I was not useful to them. It just gives you that bit that, yes, you are, your phone is ringing, but it will, it will stop ringing. So how do you handle that? And mafias, people, they would want to know, how did you handle your, 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 your phone not ringing, your gift hampers not coming to you? Uh, Oscar was priding about a gift hamper from NSSF. Time will come when we are not sending that. <laughs> How do you handle that, that bit? So uh, it's, it's really an interesting conversation. But we want to draw our poll once more again. The first poll we did, uh, why we do it twice is just to un understand, to just drive a habit of attendance, a habit of who comes late. We want to back it by its statistics. So if the back office team is kind enough to please go back to the first poll question, we want to articulate... We are now about 500, uh, more than 500 on, um, on, on Zoom and another about 400 on, on, on YouTube. I can't tell the numbers on, on Facebook and, all, and, and TV, but we'd want to understand who are these people that are with us. Uh, run it again, please. Just, just run it again. Just open it up for the, for, for, for the audience to understand. Open it up and we see if they have shifted. Uh, and while we are doing that, uh, Dr. Evers... The rea this is a reality check. <laughs> and uh, stress is part of you. Mm -hmm. uh, someone is saying that that is Kezia. At what age do you consider distributing your funds? Mm -hmm. Another hard hitting fact that has come in uh, through has been the bit of uh, the bit of, of, of don't pre don't prepare for your children. Mm -hmm. Prepare for them. Mm -hmm. Do not prepare them. Prepare for them. Okay, thank you so much. I don't. Uh, these are the results of the new one. Uh, they stopped it at some time. Okay, thank you so much. That it nothing, nothing much has changed. That we are encouraging the ladies to come to this table because we, 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 we need them. We need them. We need them to to control this uh, this agenda. And forty six percent. We still have forty six percent as ladies. Thank you so much, the back office team. I now want to go back to Oscar, but also send our sincere appreciation to family tv which donates its airtime two hours of its airtime to nssf to just do this so that people can have this money uh conversation having to coming to them through their tvs thank you so much family tv we really really appreciate that i want to make special mention on mark lead i i realize that uh, oh, that, that uh, mr katamba is not talking about mark lead but mark lead has also donated us its founder to give us this these two hours <laughs> not to forget the international center for mental health where the uh, evas comes from all these are one they are our employers but they also take off time to just donate this time for you our members so that you can have a meaningful and purposeful life the nssf purpose our mandate is to pick money from you refuse it to refuse to give it to you when you don't qualify but give it to you when you are eligible and you qualify and we are, we are performing on that purpose, but on, on that mandate. But our purpose is to, to make lives better by making savings a way of life. So ladies and gentlemen, when we finish this, and we always say action changes things, we, make, we, we, we hope that you can change your life by making savings a way of life. Back to you, Oscar, I'll take away this second part of, of the session. Thank you. Thank you for that break. Uh, the Rebecca Biamukama says savings and financial literacy is not only for school curriculum, it should be an aspect of parenting too. That's true. I agree. Beatrice KK advises that we should start early work with children 
like it is done in developed countries. Sure. And, and, and as I said, that's why I did. But I also add uh, uh, on the love bank, love your children some more. Be firm with them, but love them. And because that love bank is an investment, then they'll want to be near you uh, later when you don't have that money and you have time. Mm. And they also want their children to be near you later with their love bank. I, I want us to cross into, so what should we do? Um, how do we prepare for this retirement stage? You know, some of us fear retirement and we have a, a, a buffer. We just say, I'm going to work another 10 years. So beginning with you, uh, Dr. Atwine, how what should we do? We've now talked the backgrounds, the challenges. I want us to go into the doing yeah. in, in this psychological preparedness for retirement that's right um start i like that poster it says enriching lives that's a, yeah. a family tv poster to to, yeah. to nsf mm. right um so uh, thank you oscar what do we do starting point is for us to know that it's normal to re it's a normal life transition and um, because that's the starting point for all psychological um, or life um, uh, processes, please understand that it is normal. It is not abnormal. Because when people think um, um, changing and not having a job is, is abnormal, no, it's not. And it happens. So that's the starting point. Number two, number two is, uh, is to understand um, that we are capable of much more. Now, um, when, when um, Matthias was talking, he mentioned the word legacy, legacy. And I think that has been one of the most misunderstood concepts <laughs> in life, and especially in the conversations around retirement, because um, legacy has been taken to mean material things, you see? Um, and, and, and people say, oh, you know, my buildings are my legacy. That's not true. You see, legacy is not about properties. It's about principles. It's what we live. It is the impact we make in society. So this takes me back to, um, so when we are, uh, we are retiring and we're panicking, what what are we what are we thinking? Because there is much more we can do to make an impact in life. You see, and and so that's why we encourage that. And this is my point, mm. uh, Oscar. Mm. We should take off time to reflect and say, what more can I do to make an impact in life? You see, because um, if I if you allowed me to take you back to the point that meaning and relevance is at the core of every human being. That's the core of our being. Purpose. Because can, I, can I get meaning at 55? Yes, you can. Mm. Absolutely. I wake up and say, I want meaning. Today. No, no, no. <laughs> That's not how it's done, Oscar. <laughs> no, no, okay. But the thing is, um, meaning, uh, so let me, let me explain yes, it properly. Um, every human being loves to be relevant. And that's the whole thing of purpose and meaning. Now, sometimes it's spoken uh, out of context, but it's at the core of every human being to want to be, to have meaning. That's why people who commit suicide say life has no meaning. <laughs> you see? Because they wake up and say, I can't change anything. I don't feel anything. No one cares about me. That's the loss of meaning. By the way, that's what it is. And mm. purpose in life. Mm. So, so... When, when, when we, we tag our, pop, our meaning to just one thing, then, then we, we have narrowed down on our options in life. And that's why my answer to you, Oscar, is let people take off time and examine themselves and discover what else they can do to have meaning, right? Mm. Beyond being a bank manager and an executive in the bank, what else can you do? What, maybe you can be a life coach. You see, the, the work that we do, and, and by the way, I'll tell you, um, Matthias was talking about this and saying, oh, people discovering their, their purpose and connecting with the purpose of the organization. Can I tell you that most people, we can work up to retirement age and we are doing things that are totally irrelevant to our purpose in life. Mm. That's ridiculous. Yeah. You see, I can be, I can be, do this and do that and do that, but that's not what I was called to do. So, um, do we take off time to discover what else we are capable of? 
and that's important for retirement. You know, some people are good preachers. Others are wonderful therapists. Others are good singers. You know, there are certain gifts that we have that are not put to use. You see, and uh, and uh, we, we in our life coaching um, work, we, we encourage people to discover this and also encourage them to know that you can earn from your gift. <laughs> you know, you don't have to be empro employed in NSSF and be, um, uh, um, I mean, all of us are capable of much more. So what else can you do? Please do self-discover. And I want to encourage people, please utilize life coaching services. Discuss with a therapist or, or a life coach to help you discover what other gifts you have. Now, I, I also will tell you, Oscar, that um, we, re we, we, we retire to our areas of passion. When we retire to our areas of passion, it gives, uh, it gives us so much energy. It gives us what we call psychic energy. You know, there's something you do, I'll tell you that I love what I do. You know, I may not earn so much money that, uh, that like I was earning when I was doing international jobs, but I want to tell you, life is not about that. You see, I still earn from my gift of, of therapy and life coaching. And when I speak with, when I sit with a family and, I, and I, I work with them through the dynamics, the changes, the, the challenges they're having, and they go away feeling happy and you, re, you, you know, uh, I tell people that when, when we resolve, especially a marriage issue, marriage therapy is the most uh, complicated, you realize that a family has gotten together, they are happy. It feels like you have conducted a successful um, uh, brain surgery or you know so it it feels good now what do we need in life that feeling of of relevance and and, and happiness now if i had all the time on earth i would tell you we we human nature is always looking for happiness so when we do that when we do what makes us happy we may not be earning all the monies that the world has told us to earn, but that's what you need. In any case, at personal level, that's what you, you need. So that's, that's, was that number two or number three? Or but three number three, four, but number three, you see? Yes. Number three, uh, somebody mentioned preparing our children. Mm. And I want to tell you, to, to reiterate that and say, and call on people who are listening. <laughs> Please desist from the temptation to invest for children. And I mentioned it earlier. Investing for children. Yes, we, we, we need to have our children have a little Take bit of decent, decent life. Mm. But let's focus on, I on investing in children. When we leave children behind, what have we left in their lives? What kind of people are they? Wh what quality of people are they? Can they even handle um, what you have put together. Do they have the character? We run a character building program at, at, our, at our organization. Someone asked that you mention it again. Yes. Um, mm. Investing in children, not for children. No, no, the organization. The organization mm. is, is the International Center for Mental Health and Family Care. We have a, a center in Tinder. Okay. That's where it is. And, um, and, and we run a program on character building. What kind of character are we leaving behind in our children? Can they, be, can they handle the smallest challenge? Are they re re resilient enough, you know? And, and all these things, are, 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 um, we, train, mm. we train them. We, we yeah. reinforce that. Do they, are they patient? Now, we are all complaining about how millennials are taking out, how they are impatient. But what have we done as parents? These are things that are taught to children at an early age. You know, all of us adults are a reflection of how we were nurtured, you know? So are we teaching our children to, to solve problems? You know, I'll tell you what. Um, we mentioned that, um, uh, I think it is uh, Mr. Headmaster Sao, I don't know whether I've said it properly, he mentioned mm -hmm. <laughs> something about growing up and, and yeah, growing old and growing up. Growing up is, is about um, maturation. Maturation process is about what we call executive functions of the brain. And they are planning, uh, problem solving, uh, decision making, um, uh, um, 
uh, emotional regulation, mm -hmm. you know, and, and all these things. Yeah. So the kind of people agency. with, yes, agency, agency, mm -hmm. uh, resilience and mm -hmm. all these things. Now, when you look at your children, uh, some of us who are, well, you know, investing and, and living all these things and having a house and yeah, what and what are you teaching your children to do? Are we investing time in nurturing our children, our children's world view? How will they handle? That's why I said legacy is not about accumulation of materials to leave for our children. And by the way, uh, Oscar. It's not uncommon for, uh, I'm sure you have seen this or you've experienced some of the things amongst um, our students, immediate people. Mm -hmm. um, parents who have worked so hard, put in place things, they leave them to children and children blow them up in the next one year. You know, they are conflicting over parents' properties. I've never forgotten one time, I think about three years ago, when I was talking to university students about we were running that character building program for universities. And, and uh, I asked them to give me feedback. And children are saying they can't wait for their parents to go. And they utilize, they drive their big cars. They drive. You see perspective? Mm. Their worldview is of comfort. You see? Yeah. So if we leave comfortable children who have no idea about how things are done, uh, how, about how to manage life, about how to manage challenges, about how to solve problems, about how to make decisions and, and, and uh, you know, utilize all the skills they can have, I guarantee you we can accumulate as many things as possible, but that won't help us. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned earlier that most parents are actually... Um, stressed because when they are to moving towards retirement they realize hey these children have been working for they are not up to what i'm doing they are not ready they look at the quality of the children and they say look at this one they have no idea they are probably on drugs or whatever but um, um i'm just mentioning that parenting can we do intentional preparation of our children and intentional preparation is for them to carry forward your legacy. Please note that legacy is not just materials. If, if they have the, the things you have, fine, you have pulled together, but come on, it's important mm -hmm. to know that, that's it, that uh, we prepare them. Then two more, and I'll, be, I'll shut up. Um, number four is that um, can we... Um, where in, in terms of uh, preparing for retirement, how do you rebrand? How do you rebrand? How do you um, utilize the nine to five time? And I think Matthias was asked to share, but how do you still utilize your nine to five relevancy? Identify things you can do. Um, I think, um, I think those are, make connections. Let me, let me talk about this before you go to Matthias. Um, someone asked, Matthias, how did you manage? And, and he, he also mentioned uh, about connections. You see, I talked about relational health. When we are still working, we think it's career achievement, it is, uh, it is the, um, the money we earn that is making us happy. No, it is actually human connection. And, uh, and so when he mentioned that when we lose when we retire, and I'm sure some people who have already retired will, will resonate with this. When we retire, science puts it that we lose eight, at least 80% of our connections, right? Because most people connect with what they get from us when we are still in positions of work, right? So that's why the contact someone has, that phone contact, most likely you lose 80% of mm -hmm. them because you're no longer relevant. They are not looking for a land title from you. They are not looking for approval of a, of a loan. And so they don't call you. Sometimes actually <laughs> when you call yeah. them, they don't answer mm. because you're no longer relevant. But then how can you still make connections that are important? Number one, family. I want to emphasize this, Oscar, and, uh, and say, please invest in unconditional relationships unconditional relationships when we are still working let's know that you're going back to your family we all go back to family but how will your family receive you when you haven't given them your time when you are working 
um, one of the uh, programs we do is work-life balance. And people say that's impossible. It's not impossible. It's actually we just need to be intentional. <coughs> we just need to be intentional. Out of the time we have, how do you work but still go home but still know that you need time with your children, you need to make time with your uh, spouse, yeah. you know? How do you make sure that that love bank is invested in? But also, when we lose the work connections how do you make other connections they may be fewer but we don't need quantity mm -hmm. you need meaningful fulfilling relationships how okay. do you make yes. them yeah, yeah that's it thank you thank you for that uh, ed education evas dr twine mm -hmm. uh phone calls dwindled uh headmaster said it happened to him once uh, I, I i tell people i recommend to people make the phone calls dwindle now before retirement so that you're a little bit easier. And also, as you enter retirement, reduce on voice messages because yes. your, your children will not love voice messages. You know when we can send voice messages and repeat, they say, you, you know, you say in a voice message, mm, and then you say the same thing again. So with that phone, reduce on them. Mm. Uh, what I take from you, Evers, and things we, are, we should be writing down, we are capable of much more. I've written that down. Be helpful. Uh, Harriet uh, sending many messages. I think is it Harriet Mahmoud? Uh said, gift hampers. How do I get mine? And I'm saying, no, 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 Harriet. You give the gift hampers. It will make you happy as Evers is saying here. Yeah? Uh, and you can do a lot more. And she has said, Harriet, that this, these sessions are very useful. Mr. Headmaster, sir. Uh, so you may need to continue with them. Um, uh, uh, for Solomon Jonan, that was the name I'm looking for, who is a senior fisheries inspector. I already sent out uh, your message. Um, another one I picked up from both of you, legacy. And you said legacy isn't about property, but principles, impact in life. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, talent can give you money. This one I need to tell my children that your talent can actually give you money. Mm -hmm. look, in, look into it. Rebranding. So for us, we may think about rebranding. We'll do. One of yours, uh, ever that's caught uh, the headlines is invest in children, not for children. Mm -hmm. uh, patience. Um, <laughs> when I respect people who drive to Kampala early mm -hmm. morning because this morning I saw s real lack of patience mm -hmm. by very educated people. Uh, in suits like you, Matthias, and, and I, I feared for the future. Mugisa says, my takeaway is a happy accident. Happy, create happy accidents. Surprise your account. Mm. Maybe you could start there, Matthias, by saying a little bit more. And then I'll go to Carol, who has got a message as well. But, but start with what you advised on happy accidents and, and where you wish to go. Mm. Well... First of all, it's, uh, it, it's, it's very exciting listening to Dr. Atwini. Uh, mm. uh, I wanted to start there. A happy accident, I, I'm, I'm not quite sure I understand the context uh, of a happy accident. Oh, no, this one wants to make a happy accident to his bank account. Uh, and how do, you make, mm. how do you make a happy accident? I'm not too sure. <laughs> I don't uh, know. He's, right. He Maybe. wants a happy accident <laughs> to go to his bank account. Uh, and that's his takeaway. What, well, what, I guess many happy accidents. You, you know, let's get your context because I have a different context. Ah. And I would allow just... Me, yeah. Allow me yeah. to suggest a happy accident in this class. In this oh, class. it was headmaster, sir. Yes. And we have ah, slang okay. in this class that mm. uh, surprise your account by letting one salary collide with the other salary. Hey, so ah. we, are in, uh, we, are, we are in February. Switch on, switch on the microphone. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Uh, we, in this class, we have uh, our slang, and we are saying, let your salary collide with another salary. One salary. month, February salary collide with March salary. That's right. okay. That is going to oh, be... Or maybe accident. March collide with... That's April collide with March. <laughs> but February I, I, and January I, I, I are get difficult. Get the, <laughs> I get the context. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I sincerely, most sincerely, advise against a happy accident mm. because uh, that demonstrates a deep inefficiency in how you utilize your money. You must put your money to productive use. Mm. Your money must be making money, not sitting on a bank account wait for the next month, mm. right? Even when you're so saving, do it deliberately, intentional. Even when you're saving, make it intentional. Open a voluntary right? yeah. account with NSSF Take it out, even if it's with your bank, more. open a high-rate bank, high-rate account 
within the bank. So that money goes out of your bank account that received your salary, goes into the high uh, interest rate account, uh, or put it in a unit trust, uh, or you know, do something. Uh, you know, if you don't want to invest in physical stuff, put it in liquid uh, investments. But that should not be an accident. It should be a lifelong. Mm. Uh, this activity. is a good time for Mr. Edmaster, yeah. sir, to 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 do a kalango for NSSF. What, what, what's that? You call it voluntary before we. What Martha yeah. is talking about? Because you can do that with NSSF. Like I have five million, how do I bang it on my NSSF account? Thank you, and and, and apologies, Matthias, for for interrupting your space. But uh, it seems like he's help, helping me and my money. Mm. Yes, and uh, we at NSSF, you can actually make that hack accident. Let's for now, as as Matthias uh, further breaks it down to a lifestyle, from accident to a lifestyle, by getting by getting. Um, when you go to your to your MTN, you go to your Airtel, you can register and become an NSSF voluntary member. On top of what your employer is putting for you, you can actually put money for yourself. It's voluntary to enter, to take it out, you take it out with the money that you are, uh, you are you already, we are asking you to bring in. So for you to get into the voluntary space, all you have to go, you can go to our website, you can go, there is a link that is being pasted on the screens, on our on your screens, just click that. All we need is your phone number, your national ID, and we will keep this money will work the way the NSF money is working for you right now. Thank yeah. you. And and, and just Florence Bayangana, I, I think I know her. She's saying Mr. Edmaster sir, please continue standing up, saying it is hard to get NSSF money out. And and I'm one of those that disagree. It is easy to get NSF money. So please reassure her. Actually, uh, it, 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 it makes better sense when it's coming from a person like you because they will think I'm paid to say that. But one of the things I went through with our panel here is to open up some of our books, some of our mails to show them what, exactly what is happening. Our current average turnaround time is about 11 days. We are enthusiastic about paying our customer. But uh, what happens usually with our customers, our member is, the day they think about picking their NSSF money, they start counting down. And when they come and something is differing about their age, about their um, names, they, they, they dropped one name, and you tell them, go correct that, it becomes difficult. Otherwise, when everything is straightforward, at 55 years, all you have to come with is your bank statement and your national ID. Just those two things, and you'll get your money. Mm. And, and uh, there's a link that's been posted. Yes, yes, on yes. Uh, voluntary contributions and, and also post a link to, to Florence Bengana on what she can do with a bank account, bank statement and, and, and national ID. Back to you, Matthias. Mm. You, I interrupted you. Uh, mm. I think we, we are done with... Uh, um, so happy with, surprises. With, with the happy, you said uh, be intentional. Happy, uh, uh, and you, so you're saying be intentional and you'll be happier. Yeah. Make the accident uh, part of uh life okay but somebody i think it was mr Ed mustard was asked me about how did you handle not being uh busy i'll start there and then i'll sort of work backwards mm. and i think i'm going to say these things a bit slowly right mm. so i have been me through many transitions right and uh, transitions are really you know normal to me and let me be a bit vulnerable because I, I'll just share with you a bit about m my own life. Uh, you know, my father was a very powerful man. We lived in Kololo. He was a successful entrepreneur and died when I was six years old. I was raised by my mother, uh, a midwife and health visitor. God bless her. She's still around 82 years old now. And uh, I understood right from that point uh, that as you rise through life, it's important to really understand who will cry when you die, right? Yeah. And who will cry when you die is partly what you live for. So my principles are really simple. I live for family, faith, and the community, because I've been raised by the community in many ways, and freedom. And by freedom, it's a whole host of things, intellectual freedom, financial freedom, uh, the ability to discern. Really, I have to be free be a good person, very basic uh, things. So it was always clear to me that, you know, what I inherited was the legacy of a man who worked really hard, was respected in his society and community, 
set me up uh, learning the important things myself and my siblings. I'll tell you uh, about my, my family has been extremely successful. Mm -hmm. My two sisters very successful wherever they are in Europe and in the US. My brother is the CEO uh, of, of Lafarge South Africa, has been the CEO for several years. Uh, and I've been a CEO when I was 30. All these things don't happen by accident. There's a huge level of grace uh, in that process. Mm -hmm. And that I learned from my father. I learned from my mother up to this very day. When I call about any challenge, it's simple. You know, have you prayed about it? When there are challenges about life, I'm reminded. <coughs> work is a prayer. I don't need to think about work-life balance. Because that's how I put my talents to the world. That's how I make the world a better place. That's why I've been preserved from that age six and kept in those excellent institutions and being able to receive the best of what's available in the world. Dine with kings and queens and heads of state and all these sorts of things for a boy from Mitiana. These things are very clear for me. And so I know what's important for me to leave to my children. The demonstration of hard work, uh, the demonstration of commitment to the transformation of my society, uh, whether my community, my country, those around me, how I treat people. And I want them to see these things when they're at home. Because as they begin to leave, because they are beginning to leave, I would like to feel comfortable that I've released into the world uh, decent human beings. Sure. For many what we call successful people, part of the challenges they are dealing with today are issues of mental health with children and all these sorts of things. And it largely relates to what the children have watched, the chaos and the confusion that has been created by living a life that has very little to do with purpose, right? And the thing about purpose and why it's so important to me is because the whole idea of meaning and impact uh, is really lies into, it, it defines everything uh, of the three things that I live for. Family, faith, and community, and freedom. You cannot have freedom if you have misalignment in your mind about why you're here, am I here to accumulate, am I here to make an impact? So you look at all these things and there's confusion going in. Is it power? Is it this? Is it being above my neighbor, my sister, my village mate? All these sorts of things. Without purpose, that's how you have the confusion and chaos in the workplace. And I have seen the kind of confusion that can, created, can be created uh, by people rising, uh, especially uh, in, you know, in, in employment, without knowing what they're doing, uh, what they're doing. Now let me get to the whole issue about uh, being busy, not being busy, and what is all this. So the privilege of having risen to a very high level at an early age has given me the opportunity to begin with the end in mind every time I get into an employment situation. The greatest transition for me, the deepest psychological transition, was really moving from housing finance, sorry, from fi finance trust to go and start a business to go and start progression capital. Because it meant that I left the CEO role at 35. I moved to Nairobi, got together with people. We went around the world convincing investors to give us capital. We put together a private placement memorandum and all these things to sell our story in European capitals to raise the money. And when we raised the first uh, $40 million, we could begin to make uh, investments. Uh, from Nairobi in different parts uh, uh, of Africa, right? He invested in, uh, uh, you know, Tanzania, in Kenya, and all these, these, these sorts, 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 sorts of places. But at that time, there is no power. There is no real power. You can fly first class, have breakfast at Tiffany's and different things in another capital and what have you, but you have no real power because nobody knows you. Uh, you are anonymous, right? You're having meetings in cafes and things like that. You have no grand office. Right? But suddenly, I could spend a lot more time with my children. Right? I moved my family to Kenya. We lived in Kenya. And in that time, I would go to the school assembly. My kids went to Kavino School, a small school near where we're living in Kilimani. And I could go drop them off, sit in assembly, and listen, and watch them singing, uh, see my daughter learn how to play the violin. I get excited about little things. Take walks uh, in the evening, and that's <laughs> discover life. But the phone was not ringing. So you have to be very clear about where you draw who you are. Is it from power? Is it from influence? Is it from being uh, recognized? As a young CEO, I learned the privilege of being a CEO very early. When you get out of the... First of all, you just join on the job. And on the day you join, you're procurement people in your office. Sir, what car? What color? 
what size, right? And they are taking you in showrooms for a 30-year-old guy, right? And then you're talking to the sales manager in the showroom and he's saying, sir, there's this, we, I think the VH is the best, then there's this and this, but uh, this one, we can adjust this for you and all these sorts. How are you going to behave when you come out on the road mm -hmm. at that age? But learning to deal with that, and the moment your car arrives in the basement, driver opens the door, and I don't even know why they were doing that. The good morning sirs start. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Long walk through the corridors to your office. By the time you sit down, you've been greeted at least 15 times. And with all, everybody mentioning, sir. Now you imagine when you go home, there's nobody calling you, sir. If you're not trained to deal with that, you can say what has happened in this household. Right? Because the question could be, where have you been? And say, does this one know that this is, there's a sir being welcomed like this? So you learn these things. But you learn that it's okay to walk away from that. Let's talk about the hampers. Your, your kids can right? ask you to switch off. Because the, 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 the hampers, <laughs> right? Yeah, uh, and Mr. Door. President talked about uh, the hampers, mm. Mr. Headmaster. Mm. Sir. You see, so you take a leave, you take your leave maybe mm. a week to Christmas or five days uh, before. But the company pickup will keep coming home every evening full of hampers. So these small children are asking, Daddy, uh, this is from who? And then you check and say, oh, this is from um, Uncle Oscar. Right? Well, this one, this is from other. Now, so you've now moved to, to Nairobi, you're there in your apartment in Kilimani, and there are no hampers, right? And then you have to explain, actually, the hampers were never for your father. They were for the CEO of the organization. Mm. And that's not me now. So by the time you come out of that, then come back into a new job, even when you receive the, these different things, you know, they have little to do with you. They're about the role. What there is to do with you is what you will leave behind in terms of the lives you will have touched in that organization, the people you will have grown and developed in that organization, the brick you will have put on the transformation of your country, right? These are the things. But remember, Oscar, they tie back to the three things I mentioned to you that are important to me, right? Family, faith, mm. and community. And the third one being, uh, you know, freedom. Yeah. So all those things, when you wrap it all together, Life becomes very easy because then practically from what Dr. Trini was talking about, there you have your meaning, there you have your legacy, mm. there you have the, your yeah. reason. Why to, Oscar will share one more thing yes. that people going into retirement should prepare for. When I left uh, uh, Finance Trust as CEO and moved to Nairobi uh, to start Progression Capital with my partners, I also went on to a program to really bring down my weight, to manage my health a little bit. I was walking a lot more, never going to the gym, walking a lot more, eating better, with my mental state a lot, a lot much better. I dropped about 25 kilo, kilograms, wow. right? Mm -hmm. If you saw me around that time. So one time I came uh, for, uh, you know, for a short one, two days to Uganda, I would come, I would come. There's a friend of mine who always observed and this is when you know <coughs> that in the phone book, there are people who really care about you. Mm. He's not a relative, he's not anything. But he called me one time, he said, next time you come to Kampala, I really need to talk to you. So he called me and took me. There was a car wash in Bukoto where there was a Bon Appetit somewhere, mm. right? Uh, just before Forest something there. So he took me there and he sat me down. He said, Matt, look, you can talk to me, you can open up to me, right? Uh, people can fall sick and all of that is not a death sentence, right? Because you lost weight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> said, you know, there's lots of things that are possible, right, today, right? Um, and he said, I've talked to a couple of people as well. Uh, this job thing, I know, you must, you know, having left the job, it must be tough, you know. I have talked to some people. I have an appointment for you on Monday, right? Uh, the guys are looking for an ED. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, think about it. Uh, and please, I'm sorry for intruding, but, but he is a guy who really cared. Uh, in, and I took a long time explaining to him, I'm okay, one. And two, I'm not looking for a job, right? I'm so busy trying to build up the fund, right? Uh, we've only done our first closing. There's still so much to do. I need to do this mm. stuff, right? And you've lost weight uh, because yeah, you and, and he said, please, I'm not yeah. saying anything. I'm not, please, think about it. That's all. He followed that's up for story. two months, yeah. right? But that's, the, so seek out for people yes. uh, who care about you. That's uh, a good story. Yeah. Help you to drive the, the people are asking for a recording. I've been told it will be available. It might not even be necessary because the way people are catching 
all these comments and writing them down quickly and in real time. There's a faith is saying family, uh, no, it's Winifred. Family, faith, and community, very important. Connections, both of you have talked about connections, how you get them and how you lose them. I also want to add something. In terms of connections, if you do your job very well, the connections will come to you. I, I, I believe because of my job, uh, Aisha, a producer in the studio today, called me up. That's a connection. I didn't know her. I didn't call her. I didn't. But so one of the things you must always do is do your job extremely well and people will notice. And that's another way of connections. Deborah has picked up on when you die, who will cry? Sure. That's, a, that's a good one. Uh, Lydia Asio, they, they, there's something both of you will conclude because we are running out of time on maintaining positivity. Because Lydia Asio uh, ends up or starts with a negative. I went to collect money and it was so, and then I invested in unit trust. And so why not just say, after some hurdles, I invested in unit trust? Th that positivity is a big, big thing and getting excited about uh, little things. So the, the listeners and people watching, another one to write down is a sense of purpose, develop a sense of purpose. So in conclusion, since you started, uh, Dr. Atwine, mm -hmm. you, you conclude, uh, but put in positivity in, 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 in your conclusion. Mm. Okay. I have to do that. <coughs> you have to do that. I have to yeah. do that. So, um, uh, Mwalimu can also give instructions. So. <laughs> If you mention positive and positivity at least three times in your conclusion, you've done very well. Right. Mm. Um, um, number one, um, quality of relationships. Let's be purposeful on quality of, of, of meaningful, fulfilling, uh, vital relationships. Please note that uh, um, I, I mentioned that 90% of our health is f and, we and happiness is from relationships, but 80 of the 90 is from what we call core vital relationships. Um, uh, we, we've talked about the relationships, what Mr. Katamba has just been talking about. So many people, and we love crowds. We, we really love crowds, and it is important. It gives us a sense of, 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 of meaning and being wanted but uh, but let's be let's be intentional about investing in relationships we'll go back to because when we retire we don't go to every other relationship we go to vital and i i am so proud to hear you matthias talk about the three things the family faith and justice um, and and community mine is our add justice because i think we share but let's be let's be intentional about cultivating meaningful relationships we'll go back to. But uh, I also wanted to pick on what he mentioned. He said little things, like we, we only realize the purpose, the importance of li what we call little things, but actually those are the big things. Mm. We tend to look at life from um, big cars, big house. Big, those are not the things that give us meaning. No, actually there are so many, if you want me to say this, there are so many people living in big things but super miserable mm. that's my, why my little thing with cars has been a car that can pick up 91.3 capital radio oh that's <laughs> right that's, that's any car you <laughs> it goes to 91.3 that's, that's right. your final sentence on this and we yes and uh, yes i also want to say um um let's uh, let's make sure that when we prepare children we're not preparing them as property managers but rather as people that will carry a legacy that treats people well, quality people that are going to transform society. And, and live a good life. And live a good life. Your conclusion, Matthias? Add positivity, <laughs> positive, at least three times. So my positive do, conclusion, mm. there is positivity. <laughs> so I think that uh, when I look at retirement, and I really encourage people, the day you get into the workplace, that's the day you begin your journey to your next transition. And to make your next transition easy, it's important because it's only in transition that you're able to grow. You know, transition doesn't mean leaving one job to the other, leaving into retirement. It means willingness to be able to learn, right? Uh, to be able to learn who you are and what you need to do to improve because every stage is about improvement and development, simply like transitioning from being a good corporate executive to being a good senior citizen. All those things are about transitioning and learning. So 
the first thing I think is you need to prepare before you retire. So before you retire, it's important that you talk to a coach right now. I am an executive coach, a leadership coach, a professionally certified coach from the International Coaching Federation, and I know that costs money. But there are different types of coaches, right? But talk to somebody. They don't even have to be a certified coach like myself, but there can be people that you look up to uh, in, the, in the beginning. And that stage before you retire, you need to really understand what's important to you. Are things like power and authority important to you? And how would you live without them? Or how do you transform it, it, where you see power and authority? It has been through an office. Through Can you have that through your church community, through your local village community, through your family uh, community, etc.? You must find how you can continue, if it's authority that you want to exercise, to do it in a productive and meaningful way that makes the life of others okay. better. The second stage, and I want to tell you, there are just three. The second one that you will get to will be the stage when you've left employment you have more time, you have freedom and all of that. Be careful about that stage because that stage, if you lose the routine and everything, it will lead you to the next stage, which is a stage of despair. That is the stage when most people will begin to start contemplating issues like mm -hmm. uh, a divorce, yeah, getting yeah. disease, depression, etc. Yeah. You must rebound from that stage. And that's, it, 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 it doesn't yeah. have to get to the level yes. of the counselor, but you have to have resilience. And the final stage, which is about living a purposeful life. <laughs> Take time to invest in the Ma process of purpose and then live and enjoy so thank you, a happy thank life. You, thank Mr. you. Thank you, Mathias Katamba, for all your comments, advice, and everything. Dr. Evas Atwine Kansime, thank you so much. The Mwalimu of this class, I am Oscar Semwe Amsoke. And I hand back over to Sir, Mr. Headmaster. Sir, do you know for us teachers, we work within the time. Yeah, the definitely. bell rings at midday. Definitely. Thank definitely. you so much. Thank you so much, Oscar. Well yeah. done. Well said. Well, I don't know what to say, but uh, thank you. I've, I've picked quite a number of things, and one of the things, and uh, my, uh, this is this is homework to me. How do you transform from a just a happy accident to purposeful lifestyle? Yeah. Uh, just not just money hitting your account and then staying there, but purposeful lifestyle. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Oscar. Uh, you are the Mualimu, yes class teacher but the headmaster always gives homework and uh, uh, my uh, um, family tv has given me an extra seven minutes and these people are well, they are in my class mm -hmm. uh, they will they will be able to wait this homework is what is that book that piece of literature that video that that's something that you would want to tell this audience mm -hmm. to go visit read that should be able to impact and change their lives. And uh, uh, Mwalimu, you are not exempted from this. I know you've been doing the answering, asking of questions. Now this is also coming to you. So what is that one thing, please? The, I'll, I'll give two things. Yes, uh, please. The first one is Google. Mm. Make Google your friend. And, and I've just Googled the one thing I wanted to tell you. Buy a book by David J. Schwartz, which is S-C-H-W-A-R-T-Z, David Schwartz, and the book is The Magic of Thinking Big. Mm. Thank Buy you. that book. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Oscar. Mm. Uh, Mafias, what's that book, that website, that uh, podcast, what is that one thing, that or that person, could be even a person that you would want? Okay, so... <laughs> Because I mentioned that we have a long way to go as Africans, and because those of us, if you are in the 800,000 or 2.2 .2 million, I will <coughs> not just give you a book. Because I need to share with you that you need to transform the culture of learning to go a step further. So I would say two things. One, like Oscar mentioned, make the internet your friend. So make uh, Google is a good starting point. Uh, you, you research on anything that you have a challenge with or you want to know more about. The second thing, subscribe to journals, uh, good journals, right? McKinsey has a good one, uh, you know, you know, have, have a business review. Uh, try to go out of your comfort zone, right? And try to, to read uh, what people are reading uh, globally. If you're in a place that makes, uh, you know, sig significant uh, decisions, you know, try and understand how the global waves are moving. Read The Economist. Uh, and things like that. 
but at the same time, you know, be open, really be open. You know, the views you have, what you learned in the university, whether you have all these qualifications, they, they are classroom things. Uh, be able to adapt, to learn uh, what is relevant today. And, you know, to scale beyond even your terms of reference, uh, beyond your job description, uh, to really be the best uh, that you can be. Find your purpose. Thank you, Mafias. Uh, and yes? Yeah, sure. Um, first, uh, first publication is a book called Timeless. The title is Timeless and uh, Nature's Formula for Health and Longevi Longevity. And uh, it's a book by Louis Cozzolino. Um, it's a very good book that talks about nature's formula to health and longevity. Uh, the second one is the study done by Harvard University, and this is a study on human happiness, mm. which helps us to know that life is about 90% relationships and not just cars and achievements and, and, and big salary, but actually about human interaction. Thank you so much. It always amazes me that we bring accomplished people, but yet they take off time to read things. Then I keep as I challenge myself and ask or challenge you. Where are you? You are not that person, but what are you reading? Are you just reading notice boards, newspapers, billboards? Because these people, I can tell you they have made it. I was showing them in the class which they belong to and, and a part of our 1%, but they still read. So ladies and gentlemen, for anything that you can take out of, and I, I hope uh, Shadra could share my screen, we want to close this by saying action changes things. For us here at NSSF, at, uh, myself, my, at, at NSSF, I'm paid to talk. I will talk and I've done that talking, but you are not, nothing pays you for your talking. The only thing that will get you paid is when you get into action. Act 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 thank you so much oscar thank you so much evers thank you so much mafias i am glad i have added a block on my life because of you have come today ladies and gentlemen from the nssf side thank you and we meet in the next class in april have a good day